10 new structures completed. Train set interiors taking shape. Station design underway. And progress being made in Northern and Southern California that will help shape the future of transportation in the Golden State. This is the California High Speed Rail Fall 2023 Construction Update. My constituents have been asking for generations for us to reinvest and rebuild in their neighborhoods and in the core of the city. And the High Speed Rail investment is actually doing just that. Fresno City Councilman Miguel Arias sings praises about work the California High Speed Rail Authority is doing in his city. That includes the construction of Tulare and Ventura Street undercrossings at the historic Fresno train depot and future home of the Fresno High Speed Rail Station. These undercrossings will eliminate the need for pedestrians or cars to cross high speed or Union Pacific tracks and create a safe connection between Fresno downtown and Chinatown. It's allowing us to reverse the damage done with the redlining policies of the 50s and 70s in which trains and freeways were built to divide communities of color. The high-speed rail station and the whole system is allowing us to reconnect those communities of colors back together again. Elsewhere in Construction Package 1, the Avenue 9 grade separation project in Madera County is now complete. While Avenue 9 is finished, work on the Avenue 17 and Central Avenue overcrossings are in the beginning stages. These are all examples of grade separation projects that will create safe passage for traffic over high-speed rail tracks. Safety is also behind more than two miles of Intrusion Protection Barrier, or IPB wall, that's going up in Fresno. The wall can be seen from State Route 99 between Ashland and Clinton Avenues. The wall is being built along the high-speed rail alignment between our project and the freight railroads to allow safe separation between the two. Including the previously mentioned Avenue 9, the authority completed 10 structures in 2023. Two recent additions to that list are in Construction Package 2-3. Davis Avenue and Kansas Avenue overcrossings both opened in the last week of October and take traffic over the future high-speed rail tracks. More than half of the nearly 1,000 girders needed for the Hanford Viaduct are in place. This is the Authority's largest project and also home to the future King Solari Station. Six tub girders have been placed at the Conejo Viaduct in Fresno County. Tub girders form an enclosed tube with multiple walls and are placed between the abutments, columns, and pergola. Two girders are needed on each section to have enough room for two sets of high-speed rail tracks to be set on top. Twelve more tub girders will be needed for the north end of the structure. Crews have also been working overnight at the Tule River Viaduct to place 264 girders for the pergola in Tulare County. So far, 102 girders are in place on the structure that will be more than 3,500 feet long. Moving on now to the largely complete Construction Package 4. 11 structures including three grade separations, underpasses, a pedestrian walkway, and a major viaduct are all but finished, as is the 22 miles of guideway. All this work is only possible using the skilled labor that reports to our job sites each day. The authority recently set a new record, dispatching 1,612 craft laborers in a day. More than 11,500 construction jobs have been created since the start of the project. During these last couple years, we haven't hit a slowdown like so many other uh, parts of our country, in large part because we have the largest public works project in America in high-speed rail. Ex officio board member of the High Speed Rail Authority, Assemblyman Joaquin Arambula says, this is evidence of how high-speed rail construction is boosting the Central Valley economy. It's allowed those with skilled and trained workforce to continue to contribute to our community by supporting our small businesses, our grocery stores, our restaurants. 
And progress is not just limited to valley construction. Our partners in Northern California at Caltrain began testing electric trains in June. The trains will improve air quality and wait times. Electrified service is expected to launch next fall. The project is a part of preparations for Caltrain to share tracks with future high-speed rail trains. So now if you look up a little bit, can you describe to me what you're seeing? Speaking of those trains, the public is getting a chance to see what a future ride on high-speed rail will look like. The authority and the early train operator have been using virtual reality to give people a look at preliminary designs for the train interiors. And full-scale mock-ups provide a very basic model of the interior options. These rough mock-ups are being used to get further user testing and feedback to refine our final design. Meanwhile, the Authority and our station design partners have unveiled preliminary 3D mock-ups for the four Central Valley stations. We're talking to the public and getting feedback in the lead-up to final designs. Each station will reflect the needs and expected growth for the region. And in Southern California, progress is being made to eliminate one of the most dangerous intersections in California. This is the rosecrans marquardt grade separation where currently cars, trucks, people and trains all intersect. The authority contributed almost $78 million to help fund this project. From the north to the south, from the past to the future, High Speed Rail is making progress in its goal to connect California in a new way. And to do that, you have to connect people through transportation. And I'm grateful that these investments are putting us on the right path.